the important thing to think about uh, in terms of circadian clocks is they're a, an integral part of our homeostatic system. So they help us stay healthy and within a realm of uh, met metabolism and physiological set points um, that keep us healthy. Um, and importantly, they help us um, integrate into our ever-changing environment. Hello, this is Mark Thomas from Dairy Health, and welcome to the Dairy Black Belt Podcast. Uh, it's a pleasure today to have Teresa Casey join us from Purdue University. Good morning, Teresa. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. How are you, Mark? I'm doing really well. Um, Teresa is a professor in animal science at Purdue, but she's actually in Vermont right now, where she's a uh, hailed from for many years. And uh, sorry for the, the reflective background. If you're watching this, I'm actually in the Dallas Fort Worth airport, um, getting ready for a flight to Asia, to China, to work with some of our clients in China for the next few weeks. And I mentioned that because it's super relevant because uh, Teresa is going to give us a little bit of background of where she's from and how she got to where she is. But the topic today is circadian rhythms and how we mess up our cows sometimes with circadian rhythms. I'm going to be messing up my circadian rhythm a lot here with a 14 hour time change in my body. And maybe after this call or after this podcast, Teresa, you can help me with some tips to keep my circadian rhythm going. But um, let's get going. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a research associate professor at Purdue University, and I would describe myself as a mammary gland lactation biologist. And um, I became very interested in the circadian timing system when we were doing some research and we saw that these clock genes changed um, as animals went from pregnancy to lactation and, and they changed in the mammary gland and the liver and, and even the adipose tissue. It was a study of, of um, rats. And I was like, because we were looking for something that might be coordinating the metabolic changes in an animal um, as she gets ready to lactate. And I started reading about circadian clocks and I just thought they were an incredibly beautiful system um, that help us, um, you know, time our physiology and what we do with our external environment. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I thought I was really in love with the mammary gland and lactation and I was, but then I started reading about circadian timing system and, and clocks and, and just the beauty of them all. <laughs> um, and so that's where I'd spent quite a few years, um, probably in, Mm, gosh, since the early uh, 2000s, um, studying circadian clocks and how they function in, in our bodies um, with a lot of focus on dairy cows and their health. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads. We elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. That sounds super cool, and I, and I think super relevant. Think of what we do to our cows in modern dairies. And you know we've all heard of short day, long day lighting, and, and, and there's herds that have tried to manipulate that. Obviously, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do on a dairy. We have some dairies that use red lighting, um, perhaps at night for uh, managing cattle. But obviously, these cows are then heading into a parlor with lots of lighting, etc. So, what are some things that we do really wrong, and then what are some things that we could maybe do, or maybe aren't a huge investment to help us help the cow have her natural rhythm? The important thing to think about uh, in terms of circadian clocks is they're a an integral part of our homeostatic system. So they help us stay healthy and within a realm of uh, met metabolism and physiological set points um, that keep us healthy. Um, and 
importantly, they help us um, integrate into our ever-changing environment. And um, I, I think I, I would like to address the um, jet lag aspect of it because um, one of the things we did to study um, circadian timing systems in cows is we tried to get rid of it, you know, like if it, it, the equivalent of knocking out of a gene of a mouse and seeing how it makes, um, how it affects their physiology and their functions and able, their ability to lactate or whatever we are, we're interested in studying. Um, the cool thing about the circadian clock is a lot of the genes that generate the circadian rhythms of our body, um, and we have something called the um, the master clock, which uh, mammals have, and the primary input to that master clock is the daylight. So it tells us what time it is so we can coordinate ourselves to the external environment. Um, so if you disrupt factors that tell the circadian timing system what time it is, it will disrupt circadian timing system, sort of like knocking out a gene. And so studies they did in mice and humans, um, previous to our studies in, in, in um, cows and dairy cows, showed that if you use this um, paradigm um, to knock out circadian clocks called chronic jet lag, um, you could study the function of the circadian timing system without having to knock out a gene to see what its function is. So um, for studies in rodents and humans, they found if you expose a, 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 a human or a mouse or rat to a six hour shift in their light dark cycle, so the equivalent of being on the Eastern time zone and then flying to Europe. Um, and we all know any of us who have done this and you'll know pretty soon going to China, you feel terrible. Um, and in feeling terrible, you kind of have a sick stomach, you might have a headache and all of those things. And, um, and you may also notice it takes about five days to start to feel great. And so what they found is that in order to reorient your body, so the timing of processes in your body. So, you know, when we wake up in the morning, uh, right before we wake up, our cortisol levels rise, our glucose levels rise, and so that we're ready as we evolve to go out and gather berries or kill lions or whatever we might have been doing evolutionarily. And so we're ready for those factors in our life. So, and, um, so if you change your uh, physiology by uh, flying um, six hours in different time zones, it takes five days to um, reorient yourself. So the chronic jet lag model to knock out the circadian timing system is what you do is you change the light dart cycle every three days so your the body can't reorient itself. Um, so if you keep doing that over and over, you can understand what the circadian clocks do in our body. And um, these things include, you know, timing reproductive events, um, including parturition. We found in our cows, because we exposed them to um, the chronic jet lag in late gestation, they actually had longer uh, gestations by several days. Um, that it also causes decreases uh, glucose homeostasis. And, and in fact, uh, we did this really great study with Sean Duncan and, and um, following staple isopo uh, uh, isotopes in the liver and found it decreased gluconeogenesis, which is really profound in um, dairy cows because they have to make 90% of their own glucose. And if you decrease that ability, you, de you, know, you decrease their efficiency to make milk and other factors like that. Anything on immune system function and the circadian rhythm? Certainly. The, so... 
I should say the circadian timing system is integrated with all our physiology. So our sleep-wake cycle, our endocrine system, our metabolic, our reproductive, and our immune system. So um, I didn't look specifically at the immune function, but in other organisms, it, it does affect our immune function and increases inflammation when you disrupt the circadian timing system. But I didn't specifically look at that in dairy cows. And I don't believe Kevin Harvatine and I are the two big labs um, most recently looking at uh, the regulation of circadian clocks in cows. Uh, Mike Aker's group look at circadian rhythms of hormones um, probably in the late 90s. And some other groups are looking at sleep, but I'm not familiar with um, the immune system in dairy cows. As we as we wrap up here, what are a few take-home points? So for some of our listeners uh, that are out there in the field, et cetera, dairy farmers, nutritionists, veterinarians, what are a few things we can maybe do easily to not mess our cows up in this way? Well, I think having uh, being cognizant that these uh, the, the circadian timing system is a very ancient system in organisms and started to be established in the genome of living organisms um, two and a half billion years ago um, when the day length was actually only four hours, which I think is amazing when you think about that and how the earth has evolved in two and a half a billion years ago. And they first evolved to separate uh, incompatible processes. Back then, we didn't have... Uh, nuclei and mitochondria to separate, you know, high levels of, uh, of uh, and metabolism with DNA synthesis, which are not compatible because if you are using oxygen, that oxygen can go in and, and um, hurt our DNA. So um, I think understanding that circadian clocks function to separate incompatible processes and time compatible processes for efficiency and what are things that affect circadian clock function? So having regular light dark cycles, um, allowing you know cows to have darkness, I think is very important. One of our best antioxidants is melatonin. Um, it synchronizes our circadian clocks. So that's very important. Having regular feeding times, um, nutrition inputs, over fatness actually um, uh, disrupts our circadian clocks. So things that we already know are important to good dairy management, like having consistent timing, um, maybe consider lighting systems that uh, maybe fool the cow using red lights and uh, rather than um, high lighting with high levels of, of blue light that don't um, that continuously stimulate the uh, the SCN would be really important to um, increasing our efficiency of um, production and nutrition and health of dairy cows and reproductive and reproduction as well. Teresa, I think this is this is really exciting. I'm, I'm really interested to to think about this more and dig into this more. Certainly, as I said in the beginning, the long day, short day cycle has always been almost a little bit of a, a joke in the dairy industry because it's uh, you know, many dairy producers comment, well, gee, if I if I do all these things, long day, short day, et cetera, et cetera, gee, I should be making 150 pounds of milk, right? But um, I think this is something that is really hard to measure on the dairy. But obviously, from from your research and other research, it is real and and potentially a really easy opportunity to just turn off some lights, save some energy for the, the dairy, and give the cow back her her life, if you will, her you know her normal her normal pattern. Yeah, and and the people who work on dairy farms too, you know, because they don't. And when we were doing this research, I would finish. This, you know, sampling cows all night long and doing it three or four nights in the row. And I could feel like my, I was cold. I couldn't regulate my body temperature. I was highly emotional. I always cried at the end. I warned all my students. I said, well, at the end of this whole thing, I'm going to be crying <laughs> because like even controlling emotions and that sort of thing. Um, so if we, yeah, just being really cognizant of that, these things exist because they keep us healthy and balanced and um, 
and all of that stuff and, and highly efficient. I, you know, I think a lot of where we're going, dairy cows make a lot, a lot of milk. Um, but you, the efficiency um, and timing things perfectly, we, we need to consider the circadian clocks and, and those rhythms. That's great. I'm chuckling a little bit because I, I think back a few years ago, we did a pretty intensive trial sampling cows for calcium uh, after parturition. And it was, it was every hour of sampling. And, and a few of us did that. We took turns, but we had stretches of like three days and a few people were really irritable. So now I can forgive them for the, <laughs> I can for, forgive them for their, and, and, if, and if any of you are listening, you know who you were, right? Like, <laughs> I was probably irritable also. Um, yes. uh, Dr. Casey, Teresa, uh, a, a, a pleasure. Um, first time to meet you and get to know you. Um, really appreciate you joining. Um, thanks uh, to our listeners for allowing me to connect while, while traveling here and, and connect with uh, Teresa and uh, look forward to more research, more information and, and practical things that we can implement. Okay. Yes. Really nice to meet you. So thanks to all our listeners for signing off from the Dairy Black Belt podcast. This is Mark Thomas and have an amazing day.